We're given that probability of A given B is equal to 0.4. And since it is also given to us that A and B are independent, so this conditional probability is the same as the probability of A. So we know that the probability of A is equal to 0.4. Then I'm going to make use of this that is given to us. Probability of A union B is equal to 0.6. And applying the formula for probability of A union B, we have probability of A plus probability of B minus away probability of A intersect B. This is equal to 0.6. And since A and B are independent, applying it to probability of A intersect B, this is going to be rewritten as probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. So this is equal to 0 0.6. Probability of A is 0 0.4. So I'm going to replace this by 0 0.4 plus probability of B, which you are supposed to find in part 1. Then minus away probability of A, which is 0 0.4, multiplied by probability of B, this is equal to 0 0.6. So what we have now is a 0 0.6 probability of B. This is equal to 0 0.2. And if I were to just make probability of B the subject, we will solve for probability of B, which is equal to 1 over 3. In part 2, we are supposed to calculate for the probability of A prime given B prime. And if you were to make use of the formula, this is probability of A prime intersect B prime divided by the probability of B prime. And if you were to take a look at the numerator and looking at it from the perspective of a Venn diagram, we can draw a circle to represent the probability of A and another circle overlapping probability of A. This is going to get, give us the probability of B. And to look at the probability of A prime intersect B prime on our Venn diagram, it is the region that is outside A and outside B at the same time. So it is going to be this region over here. The region that is outside A and outside B at the same time. So if you were to look at this region, to calculate for the area of this region, it is like 1, which is the entire Venn diagram, minus away this region over here. And this is representing probability of A union B. So 1 minus probability of A union B is equal to probability of A prime intersect B prime. As for the denominator, it is 1 minus probability of B. So in the numerator is 1 minus probability of A union B was given to us as 0 0.6. So I'm definitely going to be using that. And 1 minus probability of B, which is from the first part of the question. And this will get us our answer. It is equal to 3 over 5. We are supposed to be calculating the number of ways such that there are at least three people out of the 12 people to be assigned to three different colored tables. And if you think about it, there are going to be three possible scenarios. The first one, I'm going to call it case one, will be when the first table has four people, the second table has four people, and the last one also has four people. Another case, I'm going to call it case two. Case two will be such that one of the tables has three people, another one has three, and the last one has six people. And the final case, case three. Case three will be when the first table has three people, the next table has four people, and the last table has five people. And in order for us to be calculating the number of ways for each of the cases, I'm going to be breaking up the arrangement into two processes. The first step will be me trying to break up the people into three different groups. And then for the three groups, I'm going to then assign them to the three colored tables and then arranging them to be seated around those tables. For example, in part one, in, in case one, I'm going to be arranging them into three groups of fours. So out of the 12 people, I'm going to choose four. Then we will be having eight people left. So eight, we will choose another four. And we will have four left, four choose four. But because we are looking at three indistinguishable groups of fours, so this is going to be divided by three factorial. So now we have three groups of fours, and we are going to be assigning them to the three different colored tables. So it will be multiplied by three factorial. And then at the first table, they will be arranged in a circle. So there are four people at a table, so four minus one factorial. We are conducting a circular permutation. For the second table, it is also going to be 4 minus 1 factorial. The last table, it will also be a 4 minus 1 factorial. Calculating this, this is 7, 4, 8, 4, 4, 0, 
zero. For the second case, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try to break them up into three groups. The first group will have three people. So 12 choose three. And then, and then the next group will have also three people. So it is going to be equal to nine choose three. But because we are also talking, talking about two indistinguishable groups of trees. So this, I'm going to divide it by two factorial. And for the last group, it is will be six people left. I'm going to choose six. Then we will arrange these three groups amongst the three different colored tables. So multiply by another three factorial. For one of the tables that has three people, we will conduct a circular permutation. It is going to be three minus one factorial. Another table, it is also going to be a three minus one factorial. And for the last table that has six people, it is going to be six minus one factorial. And this gives us a two, six, six, one, one, two, zero, zero. And for the last case, out of the 12 people, we will choose three. And then out of the nine people, we will choose four. We have five left, five, choose five. And these are all distinct numbers uh, within the group. So we don't really need to divide it by uh, whatever factorial. So I'm going to just be assigning these three different groups to the three different colored tables. So multiply by a three factorial. For one of the groups which has three people, it is going to be three minus one factorial to be arranging those three people on a circular round table. And then it is going to be four minus one factorial for the table that consists of four people. And for the last table with five people, it is going to be five minus one factorial. And this is equal to four, seven, nine, zero, zero, one, six, zero. And now we can find the total number of ways that will be adding all these three together. It is going to be seven four eight four four zero zero plus two six six one one two zero zero plus finally this four seven nine zero zero one six zero and this will give me my final answer and it is equal to eight one nine nine five seven six zero. Part two is pretty straightforward. We are going to be calculating for a conditional probability, a probability such that there are four people at each of the table, given that there are at least three people at each of the table. So you applying the formula for conditional probability in the numerator, we are supposed to be calculating for the probability where there are four people at each of the table and at least three people at each of the table. And this has actually been calculated via part B, part one, case one, which we have calculated earlier on. And that is for the numerator seven four eight four four zero zero so it is this divided by the probability where there are at least three people at each of the table and we have also calculated via part b part one so in the denominator this is equal to eight one nine nine five seven six zero and our answer for this is 45 over four nine three